Now, Dave, I believe that you were the first company to ever consider even putting a coating on a hook link. It actually came, like most good things in life, it was a moment of discovery that came around by accident. Uh, I went to see uh, one of the companies that made some of our specialist hook links, and uh, I noticed in one of the waste bins there was a, a piece of stiff plasticky type material. So, being an angler, I picked it up, started playing around with it, found out that I could scrape the coating off and underneath was some Dacron. It was actually tennis racket string. I asked one of the technicians, was it possible to make something similar using one of our existing braided lines? He said, well, why would you want that? You've always said suppleness is the key. I said, well, I've got an idea that if we can have a section of stiff line with a section of supple line, that would make a combi link and the stiffness would help uh, uh, solve problems, solve tangling problems. So I'd always had the idea that multi-strand was the way. So I asked him, could they cope the multi-strand, making it user-friendly? And this is what they came up with. And this was the first coated specialist hook link. I remember it well, revolutionary at the time. The line is fairly stiff, but all the problems that people had with multi-strand uh, were solved in an instant. And the idea was by removing a section of coating, uh, you could have that supple section near the hook, the important part, which is going into the fish's mouth, and the stiff section here, once cast, it wouldn't tangle. And also it helped to push the bait away from the weight. That's right, straight. that's right. Acted as, as a, a cantilever, if you like, forcing as it settled down, your hook bait was well away from your lead. And what you do, you remove the coating. And a lot of people, they, they're, they're having big problems with removing coating by using some of these devices, which is basically like a razor blade. I'll show you a little demonstration now of the 50p that I've pinched off you, Joe. I'll give it you back. Take a coin, ideally, with a flat side, place the line under the coin, apply pressure, and slowly pull. And with a bit of luck in this weather, we've separated the coating. And it's a simple job then to remove it. So what you've got now is the multi-strand that gave you all those problems and the coating which is going to prevent tangles away from it. But you can see there, there's the exposed multi-strand yep. and the coating is keeping everything in control so you've not got the tangling problems that existed with the other. This product here was the first, world's first coated braided hook link snake bite and it caught thousands and thousands of fish. Due to the success that we had on Snakebite Joe, we thought that we can make more variations using different coatings, different polymers, really because not all carp swims are the same. You've got different, different conditions, waters with lots of snags, which Snakebite is perfect for. But for the more delicate type of fishing, standard fishing, smooth bottoms, we brought out the next product, which was the Mantis. As soon as we brought it out, it was an immediate success. Um, it's broken three world records. Nice. And as you can see, if we compare diameters between the two, the difference is the diameter and also the coatings. Um, the snake bite has got different materials in than the Mantis. The difference is more immediate when we remove the coating. You'll find it's a much lower diameter. It's more supple because it's not for extreme fishing. So because of the success of the Mantis, and you can get this in different colours as well, green, brown and black for fishing over silt. Um, we brought the Mantis out and it was very successful and I wanted to push it even further. And that led us on to the jackal. 
As soon as we brought the jackal out, a German chap used it and broke another world record. The coatings are all different, they're different polymers. And one thing that does concern me today is that anglers are removing the coatings by all sorts of means. You can buy devices. Some people use wire cutters and there's a danger of damaging the line. Inside there, that's your only one in connection between you and the fish. What I usually do to remove the coating, place the line on a firm surface, which is important. And it doesn't have to be a coin, any flat object, as long as it's not sharp. And I'm going to trap the line and press down on it. And then slowly just pull the line. And by doing that, Joe, you can see I've managed to remove a short section of coating. And that's created a hinge. So immediately, if I wanted a hinge rig, I would tie the hook link and then decide where I want that hinge. And by just removing a short section of that coating, that hinge and the hook is able to rotate within the carp's mouth 360 degrees, which has got to be a plus. Because I think when fish inhale the bait, suck the bait in, and they can blow and it's all on one stiff train they can blow it out quite easy but with this moving about inside its mouth it's possible you though it's more than possible because it does work which is why hinge rigs are popular um, it's got more chance of hooking itself that's an evolution if you like of coated braids and i'm going to show you something now which is going to be our latest product and I've made it using totally different materials. This new hot link is called Sinks. As you can as you can tell by its name, it does sink. It's extremely fine as well, isn't it, Dave? It's extremely low diameter. We've used some new materials now, and believe it or not, Joe, that takes nine hours to make one single meter. <laughs> Seriously? Nine hours. How does that work then? Yeah. <laughs> it takes about five minutes to braid the meter, then it takes about 10 minutes to dye it. <laughs> then it goes to this long room, 500 yards long, and it slowly travels through a coating tower at a snail's pace. It crawls all the way to the top of the room, all the way back, by which time that first coating is cured. It then goes in for its second coating and the sinks has got no less than 30 individual coatings on it. Wow, so why would you need so many coatings? What benefit does that actually give you? Right, I first discovered this by a friend of mine who was a restorer of antique furniture. And I was watching him working one day and I noticed that he was putting a layer of the lacquer down, letting it dry, rubbing it down, adding another layer, building it up, building it up. And when I asked him why he did that, he said that ensured that he'd get a super tough finish rather than put one thick coating on. So I asked the processors to increase the level of coatings, making them finer, but building it up. And what you've got there is a coating that's extremely difficult to remove. And then as you've just done there, Joe, you've removed it to reveal this super fine breaking strain Extremely abrasive resistant, I should imagine. Yeah. Well, with most knots, it will generally break at 27 pounds. You can see the difference in diameter. But if we remove, if we remove the coating of the snake bite. So, you know, are all the companies using this process? Would they all have various layers of coating on them? No, um, a great many of the companies are working uh, dare I say it on price, and to put one coating, one thick coating on Joe, it's a lot more. It's, it's a lot cheaper than having multiple coatings, and that is why on some of the coated braids you can buy from some companies, the coatings you can remove them with your finger, yeah. and that's no protection whatsoever. Or you tie a knot and it, the coating spits, and then you've got a hinge there. That's right. Now you can see that's the difference it. between the two there. The sad thing about the sinks is because of the long processing time, it's going to be in great demand. We've already got many inquiries 
but we can only make so much at that speed and if, to make it faster to make more of it we can put less coatings on but we don't want to do that we don't want to compromise it because it really is a wonderful product it looks great and uh, i'm definitely going to look forward to playing around with this in the next couple of days yes yes 